Hi, and welcome to Normal World. I am Dave Landau, and uh, to, as usual, we have Angela. Hi. Hi, how are you I'm today? good, how are you? I'm good. Good. Garrett is out. He is signing autographs for Nerdrotic, and I don't know if I should get my plugs out of the way or the guest plugs first, because then it feels weird. Guest first. But I then think. it feels weird to introduce the guests and then go, oh, and by the way, here's me. Do yours. <laughs> I'll do, do yours. Yeah. Do you think it makes more sense? Yeah. Because then it flows different. Yeah. Because we started doing them off the top, and then it feels awkward to go welcome, not be quiet while I read. <laughs> now, now let's return to me. Yeah, it's very stupid, <laughs> I, and I don't mind doing mine at the end. This is just what they've suggested, so at home you can see me, uh, February twelfth through eighteenth at Brad Garrett's Comedy Club in Las Vegas. February twenty three and the twenty fourth at the Comedy Works in Sarasota Springs, New York. March 8th at a wild theater in Brighton, Michigan. March 15th and 16th, Hyenas in Fort Worth. And my special is at Comedy Genius. And you can get it 50% off with the code, my name, Dave Landau. That's it. All right. Garrett cannot come in today, but we have somebody who is much prettier. I, is that weird to say? No. Have you seen Garrett? I'm going to cancel you now. And now I just realized I'm screwed. <laughs> so please welcome for the host of Dumpster Fire. It is the one and only Bridget Fetissey. Hello. How are you today? <laughs> I'm great. Sorry, I said prettier, but if you've seen Garrett, you are. Slightly. Well, he is, he is a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy. He's a pretty boy with a beard. Yeah. Yeah, he is. I, I think it's actually probably a tie. <laughs> I think you dig it. <laughs> yeah, he's got some, he's got some nice tits. <laughs> Am I going too far? Yeah. Now he's going to cancel you. I, he doesn't watch when he's gone. He's said as much. So. Is it because all women are here today? I can't make my normal jokes. That's why you're so nervous. <laughs> you're outnumbered. Yeah, I am. I'm outnumbered by women. It's not It's not a first time. I don't even know what that means. All right. So <laughs> off to a rocking start. And also joining a friend uh, of mine who um, I've not seen in a while, but I'm very excited to have her on the show. So that's two friends. Uh, you you can check her out at annecoulter.substack.com. Please welcome Ann Coulter. Thank you. It is so good to see you again, Dave. And thank you for not giving me a compliment because that last one really sucked. It was really bad. <laughs> You're prettier than I than a guy. Yes. <laughs> so I'm glad I'm glad you got why that wasn't offensive or sexist. I would hope that most women are prettier than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would hope. In prison, though, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So, how have you been? Me, great. I miss you at Compound Media. I know. I miss Anthony too. He's out in his new house, though, out in South Carolina. Yeah, isn't that weird that he's not in New York? Well, I wonder what they make of him in South Carolina. <laughs> I imagine once he starts shooting stuff, probably like just one of the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> if they read his Twitter, I'm sure they agree. <laughs> just <laughs> depending on, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested though. His studio looks really nice. Have you know Anthony? I haven't I seen don't. it yet. Yeah, Anthony's a fun, a fun guy. He's one of my favorite yeah. people, and I will happily say that regardless of how many things he's put online that, <laughs> that, that will get us all canceled. <laughs> that will get everyone ruined. <laughs> oh, well, I want to talk about this uh, right off the top. Um, the Tucker reaction to the Texas border. Yeah. What's your take? Let's start with Bridget. What's your take? I don't know. I read it and I was like, listen up, loafers. Why are you inciting all of these Texans to go down to the border. You wear loafers and you're in an air-conditioned home studio. Here's a picture of him for you. There's a picture of him in loafers. I'm only calling him loafers from now on. Listen up, loafers. Stop having the real men do your dirty work. The, su <laughs> the, su the, Supreme, <laughs> the Supreme Court ruled in favor, uh, or five to four in favor of the Biden administration. Miles of barbed wire installed by the Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, could be removed. And Tucker Carlson, you know, responded by the Supreme Court ruling saying, so it's unanimous. Everyone in power from the White House to the head fund managers to the Supreme Court of the United States has decided to destroy the country by allowing it 
to be invaded. That leaves the population to defend itself. <laughs> Where's where, where are the men of Texas? <laughs> where are why, you? Yeah, why are they protecting their state <laughs> and their and the nation? Uh, Governor Abbott said, "Because I'm in a wheelchair." He didn't say that, but, <laughs> uh, but he, so what's your take, Anne? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on because uh, I know you've been very vocal about the border in the past, <laughs> and I'm wondering. Why, yes, I have. <laughs> yes. Um, first of all. Um, um, just very briefly, I, this kind of gives the lie to Joe Biden, the Democrats saying, I'm dying to close the border. I just want to, if the Republicans would just cooperate with us by signing an amnesty. You know, this bill that's going through, it allows 5,000 a day. That's their idea of shutting the border down. Well, okay, I'm sorry, even Democrats, even Joy Ann Reid isn't going to believe you really want to shut the border down when the governor of Texas puts up razor wire and the first thing you do is send in federal troops, cut it down. Okay, so that's point one. Um, I think Tucker is utterly idiotic on this. I warned all of you about both Justice John Roberts and especially Amy Coney Barrett. By the way, I was a big fan of Roberts. It's not like I'm just negative on all of them. No, those two in particular, I warned Republicans about in the case of, and because four of the justices, you know, ruled constitutionally, in my opinion. Um, Amy Coney Barrett, she's a papist nut. She's adopted two <laughs> Haitian kids. You didn't think she was going to want to <laughs> fling open the border? She's looking for more kids to adopt. No, of course she was going to rule this way. And if Twitter would just rip off my Twitter feed a little, or Tucker would rip off my Twitter feed a little more, he might get these things right. But much like Angelina Jolie, do you think that she should get the kids? <laughs> No. Shouldn't she get the kids? <laughs> yes. How many Haitians do you think she deserves? Um, I, I mean, we knew she was going to be the vote to overrule Roe v. Wade. It's she's. I mean, yeah. It's just an utter, complete disaster. And by the way, I am a pro-life zealot. Yeah. Um, it was outrageous that the Supreme Court was saying it was a constitutional right. I mean, I do think it's murder. That was outrageous. Okay, we got that overturned. Yay, celebrate. Um, now we're. We're allowed to vote. And it turns out my side is getting slaughtered, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> slaughtered every place it has been voted on, including states Trump won by like 20 points, Montana, Kentucky. Um, the tiniest restriction on abortion, you put it to a vote of the people, it loses in a landslide. So I keep yelling at my fellow pro-life zealots. Um, at least the ones you can get through to, that this is the changing the hearts and minds portion of the abortion <laughs> debate. This isn't the, great, let's criminalize women who have abortions. No, we are losing, losing, losing. And these pro-life zealots like Amy Coney Barrett, I suspect, um, you know, they just want to feel self-righteous. And, oh, did you see the write-up I got in Catholic Insights magazine? That's fantastic. We just lost <laughs> six Senate seats. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I I think I agree. You're smarter than me, so I just follow you. <laughs> We're just <laughs> I'm just I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm like no. She's probably right. <laughs> I did see some statistic that the the razor is it dropped like seventy six percent like the crossings since the they kept the razor up. Oh, I'm sure. Usually that's a. De I've always said razor is a deterrent. <laughs> it's apparently working. Yeah, yeah. I've always it's always it's always felt very unwelcoming. <laughs> you know, on that point, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much, but I just want to make one other small. No, point. you're fine. <laughs> we're, Imagine we're, we're ruined, so yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about that. Maybe we need someone who knows what they're saying. Be, I was just going to be Ed McMahon here. Um, <laughs> Imagine the people crossing. They know that, you know, 20 states have sent National Guard to the border to prevent these people getting up. The governor of the state has put up razor wire. Are, can you take a hint? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm totally coming in. They love me. <laughs> I just, yeah, I don't know why... I don't know why you'd want to come to America now. <laughs> I thought it was like all yeah. burning anyway. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it just like the worst country and it's systemically horrific? And Right. Like there's still people I know who I talk to rather frequently. It's like, where are you vacationing? They're like, oh, Mexico. <laughs> you're like, did you know that they're all coming here? Are you passing all these people on your way to vacation? Like, why do they think it's so great? 
I guess it's it's pretty bad now. I don't know. I'm if only told know. them do not come. Do that, not come. That's true. <laughs> like, I, I just find it, it, it odd that this is the time where they're like, we're going to make a living there. It's like, doing what? <laughs> Making cars in, in companies that are located in your country? <laughs> like, assembling them in Mexico? Like, I just saw pictures today of, uh, I think it was in Tijuana. I could be wrong because I'm just naming a city in Mexico. <laughs> um, so let's hope. It's really a roll of the dice. It could be Mexico City. But it was the Amazon plant. And it looked like one of those, you know, you would see uh, like flea markets, but uh, it was also an Amazon building. So it looked like they were selling carpets on your way in. And, but it's like, it looked like the most third world crazy thing, but also an Amazon plant. Okay. Isn't that kind of what we have here? Is there a big di yes. like, difference? Because I know people who work at Amazon and mm -hmm. they're, they're not happy. I I have yeah I know one person who works there but she seems happy. It depends on your job. I think. Yeah, yeah. If you're a higher up, you're good. If you're driving the truck, you're leaving in the middle of a freeway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's at least in Detroit where I'm from. So that's people do leave a lot of they well they yeah they just kind of give up. They're like I'm I'm tired of hitting potholes. Here's a truck of packages. <laughs> It just seems, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, well, I want to get into this. Uh, well, I have to, actually do I have a question for you. I was in New York a little while ago, and there was probably about, it had to be 300 refugees. And it, they were all checking into the Roosevelt Hotel there. And it, the line was wrapped around the building, and I took pictures of it. <laughs> and the way that they were checked in, I was being very careful, but... Uh, they were all being checked into the building by the government, obviously. And then in the amount of time, it, like if you were just vacationing there or checking in, it would not have happened this quickly. But by the time I went to dinner and came back, they were all checked into this hotel. What is that? The hotels lost a lot of money during COVID, and I suppose they would have taken this any time. Well, this guarantees them full <laughs> occupancy at whatever price they want to set. So it's complete corporate welfare for hotels throughout New York, and they don't give a crap about what's happening to New York. It is wrecking it. Um, I don't know if you saw the video. Um, have, your, have your producers throw this one up on screen. There were these four um, migrants, maybe, maybe four or five, but a mob of them beating the crap out of a policeman. It, it was like two days ago. It's all over Twitter. You've probably seen it. Um, okay. And, you know, nothing happened to them. They were eventually tracked down and arrested and then let go. They're looking right Fantastic. now. Fantastic. So it's just four. Really and this wonderful is in the, to have. Yeah, in the, just in the middle of New York. And then the guy's probably too afraid to grab his gun. Where in the old oh, days. Oh, I wish he had. Well, yeah, they should. <laughs> I mean, I it, you shouldn't say. I mean, I guess you're not supposed to just shoot people, but you know, they should Charles Bronson. Maybe I'm missing the mark here. <laughs> just, just no, they are. They are all over New York now. They're they're on Randall's Island. They're wandering through Central Park. They're on the subway. Yeah. Um, and especially, it is really dangerous around that Roosevelt Hotel, which pre this. Pre-COVID, I guess it, it's not a bad area. It's you know a stone's throw from like Saks Fifth Avenue, the Yale Club, the Harvard Club. It's not a bad area of New York that they're putting them up in. No, it's where like Fox is and Radio City Music Hall. It's all very nice. And then they're like, no, come yeah. here. They're like, if Abbott's gonna bust them here, we're gonna put them in front of Fox. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, is get this it? you? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, you're going to pay for this. Where does Ann Coulter live? <laughs> Let's get them as close to her as possible. Send, send them her way. Send, make them go see Beetlejuice you know, on Broadway. Send, you know, Abbott's only sent like 10,000 to New York. The other 100,000 have come on their own. It's weird. If you offer people free housing and free TVs and free iPhones and free food. <laughs> Can I go? Um, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a good deal that I'd like to have. I'm a refugee from California, technically. Yeah. I'm fleeing harsh economic conditions and communism. I just want stuff. <laughs> where's, my, where's my iPhone? What city are you from? <laughs> Los Angeles. Point. That's right. You are from L.A. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not from from there. I'm from the East Coast, but I was there long enough. Well, yeah. You, you should at least have a nice tent under an <laughs> overpass. 
<laughs> I should Did at least have a room in the Roosevelt. Uh, no, I left after, but it was it's a long story. Um, we wanted to oh. leave during COVID, but then um, I got pregnant and my it's a long story. <laughs> we left as soon as we could. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget during COVID, my husband and I were walk. We were like on a walk, and it was when LA was in lockdown under lockdown. It was like a double lockdown because of all the riots on top of being like locked down. And we're like, we need a um, sign that we need to get out of here. And this news van <laughs> drove by and it had the all cops are bad or, or bastards or whatever, right. <laughs> whatever it is. I was trying to be like, <laughs> like, I thought I was on a radio show for a minute there and I couldn't swear. Yeah. Oh, no, um, no, it no, had sure. that spray painted on the media van as it just like cruised by. And we were <laughs> like, that is like the perfect representation of what's going on right now. <laughs> there's no better place to raise a child than that driving by. And you're like, oh, good. There's no help here. Uh-huh. No one's coming. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's what we realized pretty quickly. Yeah. Oh. I'm surprised you're still and in New no York. Guns. Yeah. And yeah. And no guns there at all. But the McDonald's menus in Spanish... Mm. <laughs> you can use Rosetta Stone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is sponsored by Babbel. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but yeah, that's how I get into the read. Today's episode is sponsored by Babbel. That's no, not. <laughs> they, don't, they don't sponsor us at all. <laughs> they might now. Yeah, yeah, they might. That's true. <laughs> Hola, amigos. El Ordero. All right. So I want to get into <laughs> this. The Karen vote is what they're calling it. Now that I have all the ladies on. All the Karen. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's what we, we do have big Karen energy right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, well, there's there's so few Karens right there, and then you have one in the mask. I'd like to speak to the manager yes. of the border. <laughs> <laughs> who, who owns these cages? Is there? <laughs> uh, well, Mad Mad Getz, uh, said uh, the GOP is becoming the party of blue collar workers. And suggested uh, that white suburban women are no longer the focus because minority workers are turning MAGA. You believe, what do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Didn't he say that uh, not, like something like all you need is a Men Julio Gates. or a, a... He said there was a continuation of that thought where he said all you need is a... There's another... There's a Julio and a Jamal ready Julio to sign or up. Julio or Juan or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so he wants to cut down the razor, too, is what I'm getting from this. <laughs> yes. He said he's concerned that the MAGA movement could lose women voters ahead of the uh, 2024 election, telling Newsmax that for every Karen we lose, uh, there's a Julio and J- yeah, Jamal ready to sign up. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. So, yeah, in case they do lose a Karen, they have whole new visitors coming over and they can get a Julio and Jamal. You've been pretty vocal about about Trump because I remember, Anne, you were on Bill Maher when you called Trump as the next president. I think eleven years before it happened, <laughs> it was really in advance, and I remember that episode because they were sh- people were like laughing, and and it turned out you were very right. So I'm what's what's your take on? I actually just want to straight up ask you who do you think is going to win in the next Bye. election. Um, I was the reason um, I came to that conclusion. It was 11 days after he came down the escalator. Um, I didn't didn't even support him that much, but he was taking the right position on immigration. It was basically straight out of my book, Adios America. And I don't know, you guys go around the country, you do stand up, you talk to Americans. Apparently no one in Washington does. Immigration has been a burning, burning issue, especially in California, I might add, um, for, for, for years now. So it was because of the positions he was taking on immigration um, I thought he would win um, I, the nomination um, and and the election. Uh, and then he became president and he didn't do any of that stuff. And so in 2020, I thought he was going to lose. And I don't think he's picked up any more voters since 2020. I don't think Gates's remark on, um, you know, Trump isn't going to sweep the white women suburban vote. I'm not sure that is really like a lightning bolt. Um, <laughs> no, that 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 is true. Um, but as for winning Jamal and Julio, uh, I think he's just trying to push me one step closer to committing murder. Um, I am so sick of Republicans. This is the only way I make money these days. I make bets with Republicans 
um, that we will lose 90 percent of the black vote and we will lose two thirds of the Hispanic vote. Um, and I will have to live with these morons saying this to me for the next year. It's going to be like a slow motion plane crash. And in fact, in Adios America, I turned in that book. It's about immigration. I turned it in. Went to a fancy dinner party. I was the only non-billionaire at the dinner party. I came home and in a fury wrote up a chapter that I sent in the next day, the title of the chapter of which is, I wrote this chapter after realizing how stupid rich people are. Because the entire dinner conversation was them assuring me, and this was back when it was like, I don't know, Romney, it was under Obama or something, about how we gotta get more of the black vote, gotta get, we're never, ever, ever going to get more of the black vote. Give it up, Republicans. <laughs> especially um, Romney. Ditto Hispanics. <laughs> especially anybody. It's not going to happen. <laughs> no. It will not happen. And if Laugh it's not Trump, it's no one. People. Yeah, if it's not Trump, but Romney is, uh, yeah, that's definitely not the one they're going to come Trump to. can't do it, no one no can. Look, George Wallace ran for re-election, you know, stands in the court or the schoolhouse door. He ran for, for, for well, re-election years later, um, governor of, I guess, Alabama. Blacks voted for George Wallace. That's like voting for David Duke. Mm. They will vote 90% for the Democrats from now until your, your new child is in a nursing home. Yeah, that's true. I, I just don't, yeah, I don't see them. Whenever I see... Honestly, a black Republican, and you see them every now and then, you know, Larry Elder and a few people that I find, I personally find fascinating. It's very few and far right. between. You know, you don't no, see. No, and I love them. The 10% yeah. we get are magnificent. They're better than white Republicans, but we're never going to get that. And, you know, that's point one. It's never going to happen. Point two is you'd have to increase the Republicans portion of the black or Hispanic vote by like 57%. Whereas, huh, if you just nudge up that white vote by 2%, you sweep the country. But Republicans are embarrassed about having white people vote for them. They will not do it. They will not do it. And that's how Trump won. He nudged up the white vote. Yeah, he did really. I mean, it did benefit him. <laughs> I mean, and also didn't when you count how many times they keep doing this whole arrest thing. Well, not arrest, you know, the whole criminal shenanigans. Indictments, yeah. Indictments thank you. That's the word. <laughs> I forgot what they called it after they arrested me and put me in court. Uh, that is, no, that is a good point. I, and that that is what they're going for. But I also wonder, I, I wonder if black America is also just getting tired of the other side too. Like, is there more of, I think there's more of a incentive to not vote at this point, yeah. for so many people, because I think we've just lost so much faith in the government. I don't see, I don't really see anybody being cheered on at this point. I still see Trump having that sort of uh, that blind allegiance, you know, uh, with a fan base. But I don't know. Uh, in, I know Biden's not running, but people think that he is. And I know they're just going to slide Newsom in slick. That's the thing that I just saw Newsom. too. And Newsom is. I think he's the devil, or he at he least... He is definitely the devil. <laughs> he, he definitely has sex with the devil. <laughs> like, he's an awful, awful man who has no business. This will be my luck. This will be my... This is what I, I will... This will be my luck to leave, flee, flee my communist con California. It's the worst. Like, do you think he's got a chance? I mean, it just depends on how much they can scare people if they slide him in, you know. And is that going to be swap the swap him out? Yeah, but is that going to be the game again? It is weird. It is like he's running a parallel race. How is he like meeting with these leaders? It's like they're they're not stopping him from running this like weird shadow campaign. No, I mean I know nothing about any of this, so Anne, I would like to know your take on this. I also want to know, Anne, do you think that the there's like a bit of a problem on the right with women. Is it that they don't want it? They, it seems like they they just don't know how to attract the the female vote in general. Um, yes, and Trump would be like exhibit A. But actually, he got a lot of the um, working class white women vote. Mm -hmm. um, he will. He did at least 2016, not 2020. Um, I think it's going to be Biden, and 
And I think the only person <laughs> who could lose to Biden is Donald Trump. Um, so I don't think they need to slip in Gavin Newsom. I mean, you always hear Gavin Newsom or um, the big donor thing. Um, this is another one you can win bets on. Um, they'll always pull you aside as if, you know, they got some insider information. They've been talking to some really, really rich Democrats. And this is what's going to happen to Ann. I actually stopped a rich guy from telling me that the other day. I said, stop. I know what you're going to say. They're going to run Michelle Obama. Oh, yeah, that's right? not happening. And <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and li- I think like Newsom, I don't know why they think Newsom is a- more attractive than Biden. I don't know why anyone thinks Michelle Bi- um, Obama is attractive. I think she's probably the second most hated woman after Hillary Clinton. She, It was Obama who was attractive. And I'm a Republican. I'll admit it. He was very, he was very appealing person. I'm so glad we don't have to run against You're him again. You're telling me. Um, she, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. She doesn't like politics, and I don't think she's appealing. Newsom likes politics, but... I don't know. He he just looks like, I don't know, the maitre d' telling you about the fish special. I just think he's so, such a pretty boy. I, yeah. I don't see that. But he's doing it poorly. He's like, there's mercury poison in it. Do you want it? And you're like, I don't. What? Why are you so bad at this? And he's also, he also is like, even in that article that we just put up where he says he's not sure how he's the issue with shoplifting. It's like, you didn't notice that it kind of went up during your... <laughs> <laughs> during your reign that people are running into every store and looting them and they have to lock down toothpaste like you didn't notice a coincidence in any store you walked into like, before and after this is the first time all you're admitting is that you haven't been in a store since 2018 yeah he probably yeah, yeah that's true. He, he just got, finally walked into one in 2024 like, and he's why like, are the razors locked up oh my god whose fault is this <laughs> That is always him, though. He is that, like, the banana guy. Like, we're trying to find the guy who did this. And everybody's like, it's you, man. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to get to the bottom of this mystery. He's like, I don't get it. I I defunded the police and I made it, I I basically made prisons a revolving door. What do you think? What what happened? It's like, and then he just walks up the cash register with like the deodorant he wants. They're like, just take it. He's like, what? Just, just take it. <laughs> He's like, what kind of chump am I paying three hundred and eighty dollars for this? Stuff? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, now you know how we feel, and we're poor. Is that how high the taxes are now? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's an insane. That's an ins- his his lack of self awareness. I think. It's would, terrifying. It would just be destroyed by anybody on a stage, I think. Not to mention that every state has been invaded by Californians. There's so much animosity towards Californians in every state in America. <laughs> That's yes, right. Yes. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's happy to be rid of it. It's literally every bumper sticker is, sticker is like, don't California my state. Yes. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> yeah. And he always has the number one, you know, U-Haul out. It's like he's the, the head of the yeah, yeah. U-Haul. He's invested in U-Haul. Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, I'm telling you, they're going to want these. <laughs> I, I put all my money in U-Hauls and forest fires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely staggering. Even like San Francisco, the, I was reading about how that oh, it's abandoned basically. <laughs> like downtown yeah. San Francisco is complete. You haven't noticed that businesses are leaving your state. I was so mad uh, when the 49ers uh, beat the Lions as a Lions fan last week. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Because it's like, what are you rooting for in San Francisco? There's no one there. Yeah, like we need we needed the win. It's like you guys don't like it there. What are you rooting for? Like there's no way you like you walk around that city and you're like, I love this. Just feces everywhere and abandoned buildings and like, what you can't give us one win? The sweet smell of society in decline. Yeah, oh it's mm. great. Oh, there's a nice little place. They used to sell bisque over there where the bums wash their parts in the drinking fountain. What a lovely town. <laughs> There's a man defecating on the Full House porch or at San Diego. Whatever, it's all crap. No, I think no, Full wait, House no, is yeah, San, Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, it was San Francisco. Yeah, yeah well, you're right. Yep. Somebody's eating Comet. <laughs> so let's just... <laughs> Yeah, I I just don't... I, I think we're screwed. Uh, do you ever... Do you feel like you're black-pilled Anna or is there hope? 
Um, I always have hope, even when there is absolutely no hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of even losing that. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I mean, I wrote that book, Adios America, the left's plan to turn our country into a third world hellhole in 2015. And wow, we are eight more years into it. Oh, yeah, you were way off. (laughs) (laughs) Trump's not going to stop it. Biden's not going to stop it. If you want to rail against somebody, Tucker, go after Trump and and the MAGA crowd. Never trust a rich guy who's telling you to go fight. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) If you're in loafers, you're not carrying the gun. You're wearing boat shoes, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Those don't even have grips at the bottom. They're just meant for slipping on grass. (laughs) If if you've learned anything from war and from from history, never trust a rich man who's like, where are you guys? Why aren't you fighting? You're like, well, I don't really want to go to federal prison. And thanks. Yeah, they're like, Tucker. okay, well, I guess we'll have to have a draft if you guys are going to be dicks about it. <laughs> <laughs> so are you blackpilled, Bridget? I, I mean, is there a way to root for no one? It's like that, that horse sick know. feeling of n- feeling like no matter who wins, we lose. Yeah. There's just yes. like, is there a way that no one can win this? Yeah. yeah, like if there's a tie and then we just kill both the winners. <laughs> can they can they battle in in wheelchairs for to, to win? Will that unite America? Yeah, whoever two olds fight. Governor Abbott has to joust with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's I because I really do have this uh, this I'm not black pilled. Comp- I am. I'm, Who am I talking to? <laughs> I think everybody who's ever heard me talk knows They're that like, I'm black pilled. <laughs> They're like, Dave, stop. We know that you're How black pilled are you though? Are you are you everything's a psyop? Are you systemically broken, oppressed country? Cons- which well, conspiracy? He's not a moron. He's not gonna be no, a but, psychop. No. Is it is it is it like growing your own food? Black pilled. What no, level no. are that's you at? That's Fox News pushing yeah. the psy- psyops. Yeah, that's they no. are stupid and yeah, I Fox don't. Fox is controlled opposition. That's the that's the true story here. I'll, I'll, yeah, that I'll, conspiracy theory. I'll I be on Jimmy Fallon's show next week. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, is that a show on Fox? Yeah, Jimmy just got a Saturday night show that I love. I love Jimmy though. He's all about comedy. I don't. I'm I'm, sh- I'm sure it's very funny. I I so do not watch Fox. I have no idea what the yeah. show. I see I see them on media. I. Um, spreading crazy conspiracy theories. Well, you used to you used to do red eye a bit, a lot. Yeah, all the That's time. That's probably where I, where I met you. Very possibly Maybe not. And well, I know we definitely hung out at Kumi as many times at Compound. That and was it fun. was all in that area, you know. I still want to know if you're growing your own food yet. Like, how? Oh, no. What level of black pill? <laughs> no, no, no. If you gave me an egg baby to take care of, like in eighth grade, <laughs> it, it would it break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if the world's ever ending and I have a gun, it's straight cannibalism. Because I'll be like, I don't know how to grow strawberries. <laughs> I'm just gonna be eating people. <laughs> Chances are I'll be dead. I'm not gonna be a survivor. They're going to be like, can you make fire? And I'll be like, uh, do you have matches? And then I won't. <laughs> I feel like every other day on Twitter, it's either Civil War or World War Three trends, like for years now. Yes. Which do you think will, it will be first? No, it's not um, going to be. Un- I mean, I hate to say unfortunately, but unfortunately, it's, <laughs> it's not going to be Civil War. Um, we're just going to slowly descend into a third world hellhole. Um, and the very rich will be fine. They'll have lots of servants. Yes. Um, the middle class will be wiped out. There will be no working class. They'll be, you know, like peasants living up on the hills in Caracas. But it'll just slowly happen, happen, happen. And we'll look back and and say, you know, thank you, Amy Coney Barrett and the pro-life <laughs> zealots. And but thank you, Fox News, for pushing the Taylor Swift conspiracy when we should have been talking about crime and immigration. That was great. <laughs> that shit is but, crazy. But that's when we, but isn't that when we attack back and we go to the rich, uh, you know? This is the eat the and rich, eat rich portion. Yeah, like this is when we take them down. them. Yeah, yeah well, the, I am looking forward to that portion of, of a Biden second term. I, I, the purge? I swear. 
No, I I will go to work for, you know, AOC and Bernie Sanders just to tax the crap out of the rich. Oh, yeah. Because they they did this to us. And oh. the idiots. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I, I'm shocked how the rich has convinced the poorest people how them keeping the most amount of money is good for them. <laughs> They're like, listen, if we have more and move our companies out of the state... You're better off. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. They're like, listen, if we just put all of our buildings in Mexico and leave you unemployed and we get taxed less, you're fine. And poor people are like, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, capitalism. We don't want to be, we don't want to <laughs> live in some sort of, uh, you know, socio, uh, yeah, what is it? Socialist. Uh, yeah, socialism country, <laughs> social, socialist right. country. And you're like, well, no, that's not quite what I think. You, I don't know if you know what socialism means. <laughs> it's like there's a capitalism that should work for a lot of people, right? I mean, there's got to, yes. I don't know, it's it's terrifying to me. And reminder, the um, only real legislation Trump got through was a great big tax cut um, for his for, for rich people. Um, that's who that's who pays taxes. So I'm not really complaining about that. No. Um, didn't build the wall. According to his own Homeland Security, he built 48 miles of fence across. What is it again? A 2000 mile border um, did not <laughs> deport illegals and kept pushing for amnesties. So, yeah, good luck to you. Some people noticed apparently the MAGA crowd has not. I'm, yeah, I don't know. I, and I imagine that's true. I've never been to the border. Well, I mean, back in the day, you go over and get ketamine. <laughs> just no, like, <laughs> I've been to the border. <laughs> yeah. but not. I, I never went to investigate. <laughs> I, I, I went to get... I went to get pills. I went to get drugs and then casually <laughs> strut back over. Two addicts in yeah. recovery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're like, oh, I can just go over. And then on the way back, you're like, oh, I'm fine. And they're like, yeah, whatever, just go through. We... <laughs> As long as you don't have a car filled with it. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely a little black pill, but I have a son, so I want stuff to work out. Yeah, that's, I feel like that was the, I, I could always kind of sneer like a Gen Xer and be like, oh, suckers, you guys have to care when my bloodline's done. See ya. Right. <laughs> But now I have literal skin in the game in the future. <laughs> but if I was at a dinner with a bunch of billionaires, I would be going table to table trying to figure out who wanted to use my body like a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I would just be like, so which one of you guys want, wants me to keep a secret? <laughs> mm? <laughs> no? Nobody? I'm a whore. <laughs> I'm just saying I would do a lot of stuff for money. <laughs> No, nobody. Yeah, pick that up. All right, I'll, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not in any wealthy position to be. I'm just saying. I would like, be a lot richer if I had that mentality. Well, it's like that indecent proposal, like for a million dollars, I'll will you let me sleep with your wife? I'd be like, yeah, I'll let you kill, <laughs> you can kill her if you want. You're like, I would have done it for a thousand, but <laughs> I'll take a million. Yeah, yeah, you got to come in lower, pal. Yeah, go. I thought you were rich. Are you supposed to be smart? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kidding, of course. So if you're watching, which she is, it's a joke. I wouldn't. It'd be She's on the phone with yeah. her sister right now. <laughs> Dave just said he'd kill me for a million dollars. Like that's not true. But you can you can fuck whoever you want for a million dollars. I don't care. It, it just it make sure you get paid up front because fool me twice. All right. <laughs> 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 Speaking of uh, sex and, um, you know, politics, uh, let's talk about the Capitol Police that have announced today that there will be no charges uh, that will be filed uh, over the filming of the hardcore sex video in a Senate hearing room, the real ins erection, uh, in a Senate hearing room on the morning of Wednesday, <laughs> December 13th. Uh, which is the, do we have the Senate sex tape? We don't have the sex tape itself, but I just thought that this was an interesting choice of words. Uh, Capitol Police closed probe into Senate sex tape. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> well, if, uh, wow. So, yeah, it says, despite a likely violation of congressional policy... Wow, that's good that it's likely. <laughs> there is currently no evidence... <laughs> 
<laughs> that a crime was committed. I think there is. That's on tape. And uh, Capitol Police said <laughs> Capitol Police in a statement. The congressional staffer who has uh, resigned from his job, exercising his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent, although he did open his mouth in the video many times. <laughs> Filming hardcore porn in Senate chambers, no crime? Hmm? Being escorted by Capitol Police on a <laughs> guided tour with photo ops on January 6th, FBI raids, felonies, and federal prison. Imagine being the guy who smeared poop all over the <laughs> Yeah, imagine. <laughs> Sitting in prison right now and you find out the guy who filmed a sex tape is like, well, let him go. Yeah, imagine the guy who wasn't even there. <laughs> And then you find out that this other guy is just, apparently he also stormed the Capitol, and by that storming was a man's ass. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know you were allowed to do that. This is a, that got, that got swept under the rug pretty fast. Yeah, it did. I, I think it's because he's both a Democrat and a gay. I think either of those get you off the hook. We got um, him off. And we got him off. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you start doing the sex double entendres, basically everything is. Anyway. It's um, true. <laughs> and I, Bridget, I won't I stop. To get, I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'm, I'm, I'm again going to, to be Ed McMahon and the, and the straight man for the show because you're both very funny, so you don't really need me. Um, but that poop thing, this has been driving me crazy. I'm glad you reminded me of this. I keep hearing this on MSNBC about how poop was smeared all over by the I think it was um, Nancy Pelosi. Writer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't believe it. And why aren't there any pictures of it? I, I don't believe it. Show me the picture. I, I think it's there BS. were pictures. Maybe. Was it on a wall like art? No. Was it a Picasso? <laughs> a Picasso. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll no, stop. I think they a just Pulik? made it up. All right. And they repeat it twice an hour on MSNBC. Um, and yes, it's outrageous the, the the penalties they are getting. Not all of them, some of them. Anybody who fights with a cop or hurts a cop, I, I don't care. Throw them in jail five, ten years, whatever. Um, but the ones who just walked in, who came later and didn't realize anything, that they weren't allowed to be there. Um, yes, that's bad, but... I still think they were morons for going in and have a very limited amount of sympathy. What did you think? What did you, you thought the media was going to give you a fair shot? You thought in Washington, D.C., the judicial system, oh, they'll be fair. Uh, you're morons. And so whatever happens to them, and they're all Trump supporters, so. Did fine. they miss the, like, <laughs> people, the mobs outside on their way in? <laughs> did, did, they, did they just not notice that? It's yeah, it's just Oh, there were enough people there that the first I mean, all the videos you see, they're hideous, they're horrible. These, these people definitely should go to prison. But there <laughs> there were well, like I don't know, six, seven thousand people on the mall. Um, please fact check me on that. But it was thousands. And so a lot of people did wander over later, and at some point the Capitol Hill police just stood aside and and as Dave is saying, really just let them walk through. Mm. And I don't think they knew they were doing anything wrong. Oh, I don't think they did. And I think a lot of them were being waved in. I think there's a lot, there's so much footage behind it that shows that, you know, you're being allowed into the building. I mean, granted, you didn't have to dress like a yak, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know if that's a crime, tech, you know, technically, but for all of it to happen the way that it did and then for other stuff to be forgiving forgiven of burning down a church and then i would say that if yes. they want to consider it being disrespectful i would say having sex and filming it would probably be like if anybody <laughs> was inside the capitol that day that probably would be talked about if they were like look the yak guy was banging a drum but did you see the man <laughs> who was getting railed on pelosi's desk <laughs> like it might come up if only they knew all they had to do is like give someone a golden shower and they would have been free <laughs> yes, they were like oh you you two can go we didn't know you were heroes <laughs> <laughs> That's, I find it very <laughs> odd that so many of them are in that level of trouble. And then this is just something like, well, he quit his job, so that's fine. <laughs> he, he agreed that what he did was wrong. <laughs> well, you know, one other point on the, the ones who came in later, whom I think we're all agreeing, didn't know they were doing anything wrong. It doesn't deserve prison time. I wonder if any of those actually did get prison time, because why don't I know about that case? Um, I mean, you have your pal Tucker all over this. Find the guy who only walked through, <laughs> didn't fight with the cop, didn't break any windows, 
and he's spending time in prison now. I, I, I haven't heard of such a case. I guess that's true. I don't know how many, <laughs> I, but I do know the guy who wasn't there. That part freaks me out. The guy what, who... What, Tario, the yes. Proud Boys guy? Yeah, the Proud Boys guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And the Proud Boys is, was, look, it, it was overblown. Why? So why is he, uh, and what did they... Conspiracy, I believe. Mm. I could be... And also, well, you guys are going to love this. Um, a few days before the January 6th rally, this is Enrique Tario, who had taken over the Proud Boys from the great Gavin McGinnis, um, <laughs> he... Some big church had a huge Black Lives Matter sign. <laughs> he ripped it down and burned it, which I believe is technically a peaceful protest. Well, yeah, if you went, if you were going tit for tat, it was seditious. But they, sh I'm sorry, I return to they should have known it wasn't going to be fair. It wouldn't be tit for tat. Yeah, and I don't think. I don't think Antifa and BLM helped the Democrats. So why would you look at that? And say, here are these um, complete assholes who've who've done an incredible amount of damage. They're getting off scot free, and oh my gosh, it's really hurting the Democrats. Even even Democrats and independents are 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 voting Republican because of what Antifa did. Hey, let's do it on our side. Yeah, and maybe we can get people to hate Republicans the same way they hate Democrats. Yeah, and, and it under it was like this whole there. Everybody made such a big deal, like there won't be a peaceful transfer of power there won't be this is literally the last election and if they had just if he had just you know gone out of the, if none of that had happened everybody would have looked bonkers on the left yes they would have looked insane because they were like this and then this i'm like why are you you're giving them you're giving them a gift a gift yes. in, that was so overblown that they wanted you to consider it the new 9-11 which is crazy oh, the yeah. way that it was overblown you're like, it, oh, yeah. You're like, it was people in a building, right? Like, it, we all saw it. It wasn't a large right. building that was on fire. Like, right. it was, it, right. it, it, it just does. Precinct. Yeah, I, I understand that it, it, it's, a, it's a public building, yes? Someone went Yes, to and in fact, the only reason it was closed was because of COVID rules, I, which is another way I would defend the ones. And you've seen the videos. I do think the ones who came in later. They just thought they were walking into a public building, like walking into the Smithsonian um, and walking with friends. They happen to be in Washington. I, I think they were they were quite innocent because normally you can walk through Congress. You can even get tickets to watch the certification of the of the presidential election. <laughs> but anymore. it was closed down because of COVID. <laughs> It'd be funny if a guy was just yes. on a tour, had like earphones in. <laughs> <laughs> just, just learning about stuff when that needs to be a sketch. Yeah, two cops just grab him. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is very authentic. <laughs> there was the argument too that was made. Uh, somebody said, you know, at least it was the people like taking their frustration to the government, like to the people, the government, the people who are responsible, right? Not like you know, small business owners and, and right. like, <laughs> the people that were screwed by the government for the, for a year at that <laughs> I'm point. I'm not saying I agree with this. It's just, it's just that the, the anger was directed in the, the correct direction. <laughs> yes. You should have been upset with the government that said, Hey, listen, especially with like, you know, in that part of the country and in New York where it was, all right, listen, close your restaurant. You can reopen your restaurant outside. Okay, we can't have that, but you can you can build a restaurant around your new patio restaurant. And then you had cabs driving into that. And I'm like, this is just great. This is all healthy. <laughs> People are just getting it. it was the dumbest thing I had ever So much yes. stupidity. I had ever seen in my life, the way that they handled it. And yes. Yeah. And I kept flying. I flew but all I all of COVID, I flew the whole time. Still traveled. It was great. Still the did planes stand. Were empty. There's nobody on it except for like CNN crews and me. Yeah. There's like four guys. And, and a full complement of uh, flight attendants for yes. the three people on the flight. <laughs> yeah. And uh, every time I'd get on, they're like, just so you know, we're not serving food. I'm like, oh, really? It's shocking that you're <laughs> taking something away from me. <laughs> so not used to, uh, I'll be sure to have my mask on for the no one I'm sitting next to. And then there's always the one lady who was in like the full painter suit. <laughs> <laughs> and always had like yeah, the gas mask on, and it's like, where are you going? 
Were you, like, where <laughs> are you going to be fun somewhere? Like, if this is how afraid you are of air, there's no reason you should be leaving your house. <laughs> it's the stupidest you know, thing. I'm if I could go back a topic and related to this, I, I am so happy the, the, the concept of the Karen was invented. That was a concept we really, really, really needed. Um, I feel sorry for nice people who are named Karen. It's not their yeah. fault. But, you know, there were nice people named Hillary, too. Oh, well, what are you going to do? But the concept of the bossy woman, and I don't think it has to be a white woman. There are plenty of bossy women who are of all ethnicities. In fact, there are probably plenty of bossy men, but not as much as women. Yeah, I, I like the idea of a Karen. I, I think it's funny for the people who named their daughter Karen right like mid-2019. <laughs> and now... <laughs> because it, just was the, it was just the saddest, worst name choice for your daughter. <laughs> Sorry, like, should we change Hopefully it? they have a middle name and it's not Hillary. Oh, man, you know there's a Karen Hillary out there. It was like, why did you do this well, to me? Well, she's screwed. <laughs> she's done. Yeah. And then every other boy yeah, in her class is named Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> is it yes, because they are. Of <laughs> Can you imagine going to Muhammad and Karen's wedding? Just the disaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the parents hate each other. There's so much yelling. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> yeah, Karen is a rough name. I yeah, if you're out there and you have it, I'm sorry. But people want to know the male version of that though. Tucker. Right, I think you can call him <laughs> you're not wrong. I think you can call a man a Karen. It's it's taken on a life of its own. Yeah, Skylar on a boy is rough. If you're <laughs> if you're a boy, and you're like my name's Skylar. I'm always like, uh huh. That's as far as we need to go. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have a friendship. Just because I don't want to be like, this is my friend Skylar. What about you, Angela? You all right? Yeah. Do you have a Skylar in your family? No, it just makes me think of Breaking Bad, which it full circle Karen thing. She was a Karen. I don't know. Well, her name was Skylar. I feel like she had every right to be upset. Why? Because she complained all the time. Because her man, husband was a fucking drug lord. He had the decency to make crystal meth and pay for everything. And she saw up at I completely sided with him. Like, it, maybe you don't complain. She's having sex with other people, complaining how they don't have any money. And the all vegetable. he's doing, yeah. All he's doing is trying to buy his kid a sports car and make crank. <laughs> I can see why you'd side with them. I think we're watching two different shows, Angela. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and thank you so much for coming on the show today, by the way. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, we're oh, it's so great to be here. So good to see you again and to meet you, Bridget. Nice to meet you, too. Please come back. And again, uh, we can you can find Anne on annecoulter.substack.com. Is there anything else you'd like to promote? Only Substack. I love it. No ads, no censorship. Um, and there aren't many places you can say that about these days. No, none at all. I'm going to promote mine, too. Ooh. All right. Well, thank you very much, Anne, for coming on. Have a good one. Thank you. Yes. What are you promoting? Just go to fetacy.com. That's it. You'll I, or, see. <laughs> or you can go to my YouTube channel. I wanted to do your podcast, and I was in Austin, ready to do it. And I ate something the night before and was hospitalized. Oh, yeah. You were going to be on Dumpster Fire, and then he was... I wanted to do it. and then You're always welcome. And my dumpster caught fire. <laughs> God. <laughs> and I was in a hotel room, crying, crying. What's up? <laughs> I saw the look you gave me. Don't pretend that you've never had that. I have it every day. You have... Really? Uh, yeah. I'm sick. Right now? Why? Have you taken Pepto? Yeah? Yeah. It, it helps. Mm. It doesn't help if you're alone in a hotel room in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you got some nice soup out of it, though. I did. I, I got some that. nice, yeah, I got some chicken noodles. That's and nice. I ate that, and then I called Mother Shep, and I was like, I can't be there doing shows I want to do. And I called her, then I called Drinking Bros, and I was all like, hey, guys, not going to be there. Because I'm, I'm in a comfort in off the freeway. No, I wasn't. What um, was it that you ate? I, it was, I'm i going to be honest with Chick-fil-A. <gasps> oh, Sorry, Chick-fil-A. You can say that I'm wrong, but 
I've always enjoyed your sandwiches and you did me dirty. <laughs> I don't know if there's a demon in me and you guys are very religious <laughs> and that's why it hurt. But it you did me dirty. I, I it was no I woke up the next morning, I was like, I think I can pull this off. This is no problem. I don't feel that bad. I can just tell it's something I ate. And then when it all hits you, it'll split you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I felt bad for you. I know. You were very sweet. You're like, I can bring you soup. And I'm like, I don't think eating's going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a rough weekend. I, I, But I want to do your show, if you'll still have me. Anytime. That was some gross textings back and forth. And we still have to do a sketch when you come in. We've got to do a sketch. We ha- And we already have one planned. Yes. And now I want you to do the one of <laughs> the, the lowly person on a tour during the day of the insurrection. We have to do that where he's just looking at stuff and learning through headphones. <laughs> it's like back and da 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 Yeah, that's when <laughs> Ben Franklin and Bird and all of a sudden so <laughs> he's getting choked oh out. <laughs> all of a sudden he just looks and it's a woman getting shot in a window. He's like, well, that's odd. <laughs> Sorry, I know a lot of you are offended by that, but it's a joke. I feel like I'm not totally blackpilled. No, I'm, I'm not all the way. I, I believe that there's a chance uh, for everybody. I think Even that, America. Yeah, I think, I think truthfully that there's like, if you try, there is love, there is compassion. And you, if you look for the good things in life, it's there. You just have to find it. You know, it's hard. But I think sobriety shows you that. Yeah, and I I do think using that kind of s- applying those same principles, like where am I powerless? What can I do? How can I be, become more competent? How can I? I just worry everyone's going to lose their mind before they have a a chance to. Yeah, I I just think a lot of people are very stubborn and they don't have empathy, and maybe they're not. Maybe behind closed doors they're different people and they worry and it's all the same. But I I think a lot of people refuse to put themselves in other people's shoes. And that's a large problem with our society. Mm. Or other people's loafers. Yeah, that's true. But if you put your foot in a pair of loafers, you feel rich. (laughs) Have you ever done it? Go to a shoe store after this. <laughs> Slide your feet into a pair of Let's make you feel rich. <laughs> and you're just going to walk around and be like, oh my goodness, I can got buy money it. in my shoes. You have yeah. a bow tie and loafers and you're yeah. telling people to go fight. I can't. I can't take it seriously. You're just, you're just rude to every clerk. This is my conspiracy theory. Yes. You're a controlled opposition. I might be. Not you. I, I mean, loafers. If I am, uh, I don't know it and I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if you're in low, I don't think loafers are a good shoe. I had them when I was a kid and there was the penny in them. Mm. You know what I did? Took the penny out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So then they were just regular old loafers. Loafing around. I, but even the word loafer, it implies comfort. They're not a comfortable looking shoe. They're just one you don't have to tie. They're lazy. And you know what? Any shoe you don't have to tie. I've learned that. You just mash your foot right in them. (laughs) I have a theory that royalty lives as long as they do because they don't have to dress themselves. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I I think we need to do a study on how much dressing ourselves takes off the average life expectancy of a person. Just to pick (laughs) this today took way too long. I grabbed a sweatshirt and jeans, but I put on three other things first. Imagine just standing there and having someone dress you and part every of, day for your whole life. And part of what they dress you is like uh, shoulder balloons and a cape <laughs> and a crown. I bet a crown takes a little bit off your life because you got to carry around a crown on your head. Maybe. But maybe not because you feel bedazzled. Nobody likes bedazzled crowns here. What are, you, are you better than me? I don't know. Yeah, I have a crown in the back of my crown bit. <laughs> That's why. I bought it off an 80-year-old. <laughs> 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 I think crowns are cool. Okay? They are cool. I yeah. think so. I like a tiara myself. Yeah, I don't hate a tiara. Oh. Oh, oh that's a flash of them wanting us to leave. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into the end of the world. You're good. Is it me? All right. <laughs> Capitol Police announced. Oh, nope. That's not it at all. I'm not always on the ball. It's most of the time. 
Taylor Swift and Travis, if they break up, what will her album be called, Bridget? Her album's going to be We Didn't Break Up Haters, I'm Pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. Suck suck it, haters, I'm pregnant. (laughs) Triplets. Losers. I like it. It's a long title, but it's effective. (laughs) And it... (laughs) And it really spells it out for her fans. <laughs> I'm living happily ever after, bitches. Exactly. <laughs> Is that better? No, no, it's perfect. I think the whole. I don't think they're going to break up. Oh, you're wrong. I'm just rooting for her. Oh yeah, she's uh, so. You know, I, I think it's about time she gets a break. I feel like you know, can't can't a sigh up fall in love? Yeah, can't. Doesn't some... a sigh up deserve to have a happy ending? Yeah, can a hologram. <laughs> Just you know, have have a good good life. Can somebody who makes forty million dollars a show finally get a smile? Can't she? Her cat is worth more than him. Did you know that? That's a true thing. Her cat is worth more than her boyfriend. For real. What's your title? Uh, I gotta ask her first. We gotta go in a circle. I, I always do <laughs> ladies have first. To go. Oh, it's yeah. nice. Gotta go ladies first. I'm uh, very chivalrous. You are. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Shake It Off, the CTE album. (laughs) Shake it off. Shake it off. And then he goes and uh, murders someone. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) Well, CTE is a a vicious I I know. (laughs) Vicious. And then mine would be, you caught footballs, I caught herpes. I think... Angela's Angela's wins. Does uh, does Angela's wins? But what if she has the Herp Dogs and nobody told her? (laughs) What if her new album's called Herp Dogs? Because that's her slang for herpes. She's like, why did you leave me with Herp Dogs? Because he's more expensive than you. Yeah, I I bet hers is, though. You just said it was. No, well, the cat, too. That's what... (laughs) Yeah, the cat... If if there was a cat in the house with ninety million dollars, I would sell it. I would seriously go to a pawn shop and be like, "Look, just keep getting cats and keep selling them." Yeah, I'd be like, "Give me five hundred bucks, and I'm gonna keep buying her cats, and every week I'll have you a new Taylor Swift cat on the black market, on the cat market." Good night. 